Russian guys. What did your what were your thoughts about uh, game face? So we said that it was more three dimensional. Okay. We kind of think of it as a graphing but for some taste and each possible tag as a dimension. So like four Everybody else understand it? I didn't. I think. Um, okay, you want to draw so, a picture? Um, or, I don't think I can know how to. You can draw n dimensions? Yeah, dimensions. Yes. <laughs> Each so two dimensions. Dimension. Two I dimension. can draw a picture well. with three dimensions. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Or even just two. Pretend there's only two. Okay. So that means that all the players, just pretend there's only two dimensions, are on that space and they're yeah. moving around. They yeah. can dislike, I mean, some other sporty looking closer. Yeah, so if that you would dislike decrease a sporty yeah. thing, you'd go back right. this way. Right. Can something be one more sporty than another? Is sporty a discrete quality or is it a continuous? No, so it's not, you're not thinking of each thing. You're thinking, this isn't like a thing moving, it's a sport, it's a user, user moving. So a mm -hmm. user can be more sporty if he likes 10 sporty things. That makes him more sporty than somebody who would only like one. Oh. Cool. So now you also have the idea of two people being near each other and end the dimensions. Yeah, and then I guess you, you could like do that too then. Tell people like, oh, you and this person are close together and it's yeah. the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mike, you're going to build kind of like a recommendation. Go into a party. Make sure you talk to them first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Are there any sub? Are there any? Uh, so it's basically n dimensions. It's discrete, right? Because it can't be between you either one, you either yeah. two or three. Um, does it have boundaries? Um, can you ever like overdose on sportiness? I don't think so. No, 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 it doesn't really matter. I guess our items, however many items we are, set the boundaries. Right. Yeah. And how would you model this in uh, abstractly in code or in, in pseudo code? How would, what? Well, we have a map that mm -hmm. maps um, all the categories, and then every time somebody likes or dislikes something, it just adds or subtracts. So each person has one of these maps? Yeah, and each person has a piece manager. So yeah, okay. That's a, that's cool. All right. Um, how about Happy Saturdays? What is your, what is your story? All right. Well, we started with, we decided on it being continuous mm -hmm. because it's, an application that you keep um, updating over time. Um, we said you had multiple spaces because uh, as in like different activities in the application because you'll be switching pages. Um, and then we came up with the coordinate systems are really time, space, um, and then the latitude and longitude, which is kind of like the coordinates as well. So in other words, so, 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 so in a word, what is the game space? What, if you want to map it to something, English. Yeah. Well, I had a slightly different opinion than some of the other teammates on that suggested uh -oh. that the game space is uh, both uh, space and time. Yeah. Because my perspective looking at it was as the player moves in space, like when you're in the personal interface, you're looking at a global map, but you're moving back and forth and you can you see yourself in different spaces over spans of time. Yeah. Yeah. So your game space can be represented by latitude, longitude, and time. Yeah. And then on the other hand, if you go to the global view, it's just li latitude and longitude. Oh no, with respect to your frame of reference. You're projecting over all time. But if you're looking at a trend, the yeah. time comes into play. Okay, so that sounds reasonable. So so what's the counterpoint to that? Who was uh, uh, these anybody guys? else on the team? I mean, I have, a, I have a sort of third coordinate system. Yeah. Um, if you want to take a very simplistic approach, and because the main thing is happy, sad, mm -hmm. so you have that two coordinate system, yeah. and that doesn't really restrict you to any particular time because when you're zooming in and out, yeah. um, you're constantly changing. Yeah. So you would have different number of points because there would be different amount of players per um, 
you know, distance perspective. Uh, so in that, in that respect, you could have happy, sad, and then for each individual coordinate, you could have a separate, um, another 2D coordinate. So if yeah. you zoom in happiness, yeah. and only look at happiness, yeah. you can look at the intensity of happiness and have yeah. like very intense to meh, yeah. and then you go in there. So you sort of like but nested, you, you have nested coordinate systems. Why, why isn't it only a linear? What? Happy, sad, instead of, uh, instead of happy, like, sad. I mean, you oh, can yeah. do that too. You can do that too. But you yeah, can't be you can happy and sad. I like that. <laughs> that, 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 that happy and sad are opposing forces. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just but, actually, but it sounds like the way you were describing Why? it, you were describing more views and rendering and user interface rather than a game space that, 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 that places objects and people in, into, a, into an abstract space. Right? So, so just like with the shooter, even though you can't see the people behind you, the space is still there. That's what I would say. Anybody else? So go back. So, so what's your counter to what Taha just said? I think Taha's point is excellent. <laughs> yeah. Wimp. <laughs> but if, if you're thinking like in, in specific features of the program, I mean, what do you need to ask the program about? Like, you need some answers from uh, what the users have given you as, as data. You're asking from that structure, you see. Like how is it? How how would each of those systems like make it easier for to ask? Right. I'm always a big fan of question. being able to say like this is my house, so that way you would keep it anonymous. Like that wouldn't be tracked at all, or maybe and then you could move it forward. Like this mm -hmm. is my school. This is my place right. of work. Um, maybe that could also be a different sort of way of having coordinates. Well, they could. Yes, it's true. Uh, um, in other words. Each, because I want to ask a question. If you're tracking space as a continuous coordinate, i.e., you know, lat long with n degrees of uh, n numbers at the decimal point, then does the, the rules and the experience you want to create make it necessary for me to tell that I am close to somebody or that we are actually essentially in the same place? My point is, is it really continuous or do you want to have a sense of a radius or a sort of superimposed grid? I'm not fully understanding your question, but here's what I interpret that you're trying yeah, to suggest. Yeah. That from what I understand is you're suggesting that if uh, you're in this room and also you say you're happy, 10 minutes later you're in the other room and you say you're sad, yeah. and I'm looking at the global view, there's two of you in there. Yeah, is right. that what you're... That's kind of what I'm saying, or, okay. or but the flip of it, if I say I'm happy and then I walk over here and I say I'm sad, it should be as if I didn't move because we're so close. I mean, that's a question. That, that's Does the game get confusing if a motion this big or the two of us are standing across the room and this big game doesn't know we're close to each other? So and that's why time is important. So, true. so for this thing, like, uh, because uh, even if you look at it from a global standpoint, everybody's not going to update at the same second. You, yep. You're absolutely right. So one thing that we thought about this earlier was not to screw the global statistics with respect to one person who updates it 20 times a day and the other who does it once. Yeah. Both are equally important to yeah. us. Yeah. So what we do is we take a weighted average of you yeah. and we implement that into the yeah. global statistics. Well, what, what about, go ahead. What about uh, so I think, I think you need more in your game space than just the coordinate system because you need to have some, well, if you didn't, then you wouldn't need any maps. Right, because if all you care about for your game state is just the latitude and longitude, then you don't need to superimpose it on a map somehow. Oh, that's part of my. But if you want to superimpose on a map, then that map is part of the game space, I would think. Because and you might, and why would that be useful? Yeah, you know, uh, it could be just a view. Yeah, I mean, I think but if it's a view, then you could easily just swap it in with any other map, say Mars or Venus. Well, but it could unless be there's some actual content that makes it, you know, right. No, I think it's. I think it's a. I think you could go either way on it. I mean, I, I, I would debate you saying it's. It's a view, but it, you could be many different. It could be a Google map. It could be a Bing map. It could be just a Bing map. Uh, it could be any number of things. It needs something that, that takes a, a, a Earth GPS location and turns it into a visual. So, so actually, so, so maybe the other way of saying is the game space really is the world. Yeah. Is the Earth. But we also have time in it. Yeah, well, it's the, the Earth in, in a sense. Yeah. Time. You see, which one is more important when you ask? What's the longitude and latitude for this particular up, uh, happy set update, or the actual location? For example, the Brandeis campus versus the oh, so when you record the game last last night. The the key yeah. the key here the most important thing here is to record your exact coordinates because the rest can be generated like 
considering we have something right. as catalog as Google Maps, we can pull the other data out from just the GPS, like just the coordinates. Right, but, but is that the more important feature to ask for? I would say so. I, I'd say it's the raw form. Sometimes people don't even know where they are when they're updating it. It's a raw form. You can use sure, the raw form. But that's part of your game state, something that they don't particularly see. They, they don't need to see the coordinate systems, whatever they're they didn't, whatever They're not going to see it. They're going to see themselves as a spec on the map. Yeah. So if they're at Brandeis University, Google Maps is going to put them at Brandeis University using those coordinates. They never really understand or even look at those numbers. No, just but you need to be able to easily ask, where am I in a location-based system rather than a coordinate-based system, for, for example. And that's, uh, we need to ask, I'm sorry, how do, who do we ask? Well, you might not. Yeah, might not. That's what I'm saying. That's a counter. But I mean, but it's, it's an interesting a, point because if that's an important question, I mean, I think I, I kind of disagree and I kind of agree. If that's an important question to be able to answer, then it's worth thinking about. Right. Okay. How would you get from the, the the GPS location to that answer? And it may, if you have, an, if you have, oh yeah, there's a there's a Google API, no problem. Then you then I think you're okay. If it turns out that that's hard and there's something else you want to record in your coordinate or in your game space to make that answer easier, then that's To be honest, important. I'm going under the assumption, like so far I've been under the yeah. assumption that Google solves that problem for yeah. me. Mm. But if it doesn't, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Like what if you want to have your sister's house or something? If you want to put the labels of particular places, mm -hmm. then that would be part of the game space. Yeah, but let, let, we'll get to the next thing. Because right. the objects yeah. in the game space, that, that would be an object, presumably. Yeah. So, Although you could argue either way, it could be fundamental yeah. to the game space. It's, it's not something we need yeah. to yeah. plan as well. But I want to I want to I want to sort of quickly get back to the question I the, the, the idea that I was throwing out, which is that superimposing over the planet a grid of twenty by twenty feet or hundred by hundred kilometers and recording that so that you you immediately have the notion that two, whatever the whatever the distance is, you immediately have the notion of people being in the same place, not meaning that they're literally at the same exact spot on the ground. So it's just a, just a question. Now, now the one answer would be, if I have the exact spot on the ground, then I can, I can after the fact, compute a grid. You see what I'm, the simple question? I completely understand. So just throw that into the, into the, into the hopper to think about it. But, but that's, that's good. Um, so I like, you know, I like the, the Earth coordinate system plus, plus the time coordinate. And then how about the, hap the happiness? Is that a coordinate of the game space or just simply a state of the player? I think it's just a state of the game. Yeah. It's not a coordinate. Because it changes. Oh. Okay, giraffes. I really want to know about the vertical movement. So what, what, is, your, what is your game space? Uh, it is a discrete game space yeah. simply because you have only a couple of movements which you're actually able to do. Yeah. It, it seems, it's like abstractly continuous, but it's really not because it seems that you're moving forward yeah. all the time. Yeah. But in fact, your position in the coordinate space is exactly in the same spot throughout the whole game. Okay. Unless if you jump, in which case it's a, um, it's, it's discrete because there's only a certain amount you can jump in, like mm -hmm. one action. Mm -hmm. um, as we said before, it's two dimensional. And it's not a single space because we're gonna have multiple levels okay. in our game. Um, it's not nested because it's like the levels. They're connected linearly. Yeah. I would so have I get. Nested. What are because the nested implies that you can go in and then come back out, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, nested and, and, and linked is pretty related, but the the, the, the in and out concept of the nested links. Yeah, that's true. But I have a question. Um, when I enter the, when I, I'm the giraffe, when I enter the park and I'm running, do I ever reach the end of the park? Yes, you do. Okay. Yeah. Oh, interesting. The sanction in the ranks. Okay. Do you or don't you? We have to decide. There is no such thing. We want to do it. But the limits have enemies. One way or one way. I thought you were trying to get to the airport. Yeah, yeah. Who's the visionary? Who was the visionary? Were not you the what? original? Uh, I thought there's a way I saw the way that the it's a long bit map or whatever. Did you might make levels or just a huge confusion. So, so how do you how do you hit the level change? Right. We, we can either do it through time or we can do it through reaching the end goal. We haven't decided yet. Yeah, like the airport then like that. Okay, so the, what yeah. I'm getting at is that if you can reach the end goal, then you have to have a coordinate that's measuring progress towards the end goal. 
which will which is yeah, the coordinate is measured by the it's, it's the measured enemies by the moving yeah. as opposed to the and the enemy is just moving with time, the right? Space. Yeah, I think we might as well use time because since the rep always moves at the same speed right now, mm -hmm. we could use time to represent this. Do the uh, do the enemies move at the same speed as the background? Sometimes. Something's faster. I mean, I think it's actually a view question as to whether or not you're moving or the background's moving. The background's moving. But I mean, but that's just a view. I mean, it's relative. You could, you could imagine either way that the character there's. You could imagine the background is just a, a, on the circle, and the character is like moving on it, and you've got a window that's following along. Well, wouldn't that have to be stored in the location, an array that has that background? Because right now we just have a couple of pictures of the yeah, I mean, it could be. It could be. I'm just saying. There's, there's multiple ways of looking at it. Yeah. Your way works perfectly well too. Well, my, my intuition says that it doesn't. <laughs> but the, I mean, when you're thinking about the game, the, yeah. in the game state, does the person think they're actually in a different place when the background changes? Are they paying attention to it, or is it just like kind of Muzak for the eye? Music. Is it Muzak for the eye? Then in that case, it's probably. Well, for instance, uh, client, uh, you're, you're the you're the client. What what what? What say you about the coordinate system? Are you buying the, the, the current plan uh, or the idea of discussion? I was, I was taking up task and stuff. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, okay, I mean, I think that those are reasonable discussions. We don't have to solve it right here, but my gut says that, that you're going to end up with something else. The way, the way, I, see, the way I, see, I see the coordinate system is that it's, if it's a level-based file that you're lo loading. You have like specific steps of uh, frames that you're displaying at each, each point in time, essentially. Mm -hmm. And you also have like a level, like the distance that you can jump, that the height that mm -hmm. you can jump, that, that's a, a different coordinate mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. like ground like when level, you have the helicopter, high level. You're gonna have to figure out where they are too. Yeah. And if you shoot them, you're gonna have to figure out if the bullet hit the helicopter. So I think all those things, so you, can, you can solve them in, in a little local variable here, local variable there, but you're gonna kill yourself. You're yeah. better off thinking through an abs a model that abstractly models the situation. And then I think all the other stuff will fall out of it much more easily. But we can set that aside. OK, so now, uh, I'm going to skip the whole brand that I think is going to be I had options. Um, I'm, going to just, I'm going to just mention it, but we won't go into it. So, so the idea I wanted to play with was that if we wanted to, this was a game that nobody had made up, so I just made it up. If we wanted to create a game whose User was being played on the brand life campus. What could you do with that? That was kind of the, the and I and actually was thinking. I have been thinking about this, you know, because you can think about how what would the great game space look like here. You could think about the rules. You could think about what kind of players and objects you had. You could think about how you would use geographic location versus logical location. You know, I, I don't know the name of this building. Is this a Shapiro? Uh, no, that's. Oh, Whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. It matters yeah, yeah, yeah. not. Uh, you know, I'm at the WBRS yeah. office. Yeah. You know, semantically versus I'm at this coordinate system. You could think about, you know, there are cars that could run you over. I mean, there's a lot of things you could do with it to make this fun. You could think about what the goals were, but um, we, we don't have time for that. So, but but it's fun unless unless people demand then they will do it. But let's go on because um, we're gonna we're gonna. Um, you can think about what the goal would be after you want to become president of the university. You want to steal all the slide projectors since that's like a very popular goal. I don't know why. Okay, so the next major mechanic is the objects and, and their attributes. Now, the, the, there's legitimate debates because there's no correct answer about whether something is an object or part of the game space. But basically, uh, abstractly, the game space creates a space that defines a coordinate system so you can say where something is and the objects then are placed into that coordinate system. That's the basic idea. So um, uh, they, objects, can, uh, objects can move, so they include the, 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 the characters, but they can also be objects that can't move, like a building, or like uh, a room, or like something, uh, a tree or whatever. The objects that you put in there are there for a few reasons. One of them would be because the, the rules that you're trying to express need to know the placement of that object within the space. It could be that the object can move, in which case uh, you need to be able to know where it is and know how to move it. It could be that the object is there simply because you have to render it. It doesn't move at all, but it's just something you need to be able to draw. 
Because if you need, if you think about, for example, zooming in to a closer look at something, or pip looking at it from different angles, or looking at 3D view versus a, a airplane view, all those things would be different renderings of the game space plus the objects um, by some uh, some algorithm or some kind of image processing. So the other thing about um, about the, the objects in the game is that they have state. Okay, now state is one or more pieces of data that um, we need to know about about the object, and they can be fixed, like how how tall it is, what the color is. They could be variable by player action, like if it moves. They could be variable by time. Time passes and the giraffe gets old, it gets gray hair. They could be variable randomly. A, a storm passes and the buildings get wet. So there's a lot of reasons why um, the state of an object within your game space might change. This is nothing too profound in a way, but it's, again, useful to think about it in a, met in, in, in a methodical way, because it's going to help you think about the algorithms that drive your game and how uh, you can you can implement it in a way that's the most simple, reliable, and expresses what you're trying to achieve. Um, the other thing that's interesting is that not everything about an object in the game is necessarily communicated to a player or to all players. Sometimes the state of an object is totally secret. Like, you know, is this friend or foe? It's a, it's a non-player character and you don't know. You can generally tell by its behavior. Sometimes it's totally obvious, you know, what's this person's name. Sometimes it changes over time, like what's the strength of the health and so on. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of the, the sort of the, the mechanics, the way the game operates, is captured also in the way you manage the state of all the objects. So what are the objects, first of all, what are the types of objects, and for each kind of object, what are the different states it can take on. So for a, for a, for a person, I can list, you know, how, how happy is he, you know, what is his name, how old is he, where exactly is he located, where in time is he located, whatever it is, you make the list. You need to know what those are, because they're all going to your code, and they're going to all go into the logic of your game. So before you even start coding, it's useful to have a list of that for each of your different kinds of objects. Now something that, who knows what the finite state machine is? Uh, who's taking 38? Uh, that's going to be a, 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 an admission question next year. What's fine? Okay, finite state machine is a, well, here's a finite state machine for you. It's, again, a big word for something pretty simple. Um, but it's a way to, uh, to describe the, when uh, a parameter or value can change in certain ways and not other ways. And the idea is that you draw, the, conceptually, you draw a diagram that says, I'm in this state, if this happens, that's my new state. If this other thing happens, that's my state. So you could, for example, say, you know, I'm in the, in the state of a newborn giraffe. Uh, if, um, well, give me some ideas of what this, how the state of this giraffe might change. There's control. What are the things that can, that can happen to a giraffe? Well, the giraffe can get hurt and the giraffe can die. Right. Can die, but like, you know, get caught in the net. Right, okay, so let me just draw that out. He so, won't die, trust me. <laughs> say what? He's not gonna die. Okay. <laughs> he could just get stunned. That's part of our demographic. Okay, so the giraffe is born or it's, it's alive. <laughs> okay, now how does it how does it get how does it how does it die or how does it almost die? Well, if it gets trapped in a net, it just goes no. Nah. <laughs> so it's trapped. And then how does it get out of being trapped? It doesn't. You start again. It's like continue, and then you get one. You're back into a state. So basically, the, the user just continues. What else can happen to a giraffe? The giraffe could run into like an ice cream truck or something. Right, run into obstacle, and then what happens to him? He hurts his head and move up. <laughs> okay, somebody else. He needs a good answer. <laughs> okay, so he can run into an obstacle, and then what happens? Then he gets hurt. It's injured. Is that different than this? Yeah. Okay. Yes. It's like the same effect, though. But it doesn't prevent, but you don't have to continue to get injured. How do you get out of being injured? You have health. You have a level of health. Your health will go down, and your the draft will become transparent for a second. Yeah. And then it will come back to be. Okay. I don't think so we've seen the same thing. What if you get stuck in the object and the screen moves you back and you don't jump in time? 
that's why you should be kind of transparent so that then you so for example, if you're trapped, waiting a second doesn't help you. Oh, yes. so I see what Jeremy's saying. So you do take damage, but you become invincible, so you're able to just walk through the object. Yeah. Okay. So okay, so when you go here, you're in injured mode, which has certain effects, like your health goes down. Yeah. Something else, and then after a certain amount of time passes, you're back to the regular state. Yeah, you have a few invincibility frames. Okay. And then you know, so the well, so the basic idea is. You can also go to trap mode from there if your health is out. Then you yeah, yeah then you go to it and, and you become trapped. The same is true. It's only a, when you your health reaches zero, uh -huh. it, it's game over. I see. So you trapped or, is game over. Or the but faint, faint, faint. Yeah. Yeah, it's like if health reaches zero, oh, you're not really <laughs> trapped. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's the same state. Okay, so that's so that's the point. So so a little bit later on, not not this week probably, but as you sort of try to make the game work, you're gonna have to work out a diagram like this that says if I give the states all names, enumerate how you can get from one state to the other, and how you get back, and discover what transitions are not possible, and which ones are possible. And the reason you want to do this is because otherwise you're gonna have the logic of your game strewn all over the game in weirdo little if statements and local variables, and nobody will know what the heck's going on if you want to adjust the rules. So you want to build the state transitions into one method in, 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 in one of your models that control, given I'm in this state, oops, given that this happened, here's the new state I'm in, and then have that update the state of the, of the uh, particular character, particular object being the giraffe, to be something else. And by the way, there's other aspects to it, like maybe part of the state or a different state machine is the, the permissible mo motions. Like if the neck is all the way this way and X happens, then, the, then he dies. But if the neck is this way, then X happens and he doesn't die. But the, this is the, the idea here of a finite state machine to control this is strong advice to, to, to capture all the logic that pertains to how a particular property of a particular object changes in one place. So you can look at it and you can test it and you can change it when you decide it's not good. Okay, so that's that's all a finite state machine. Now, now there's, there's books and PhD theses all about how to make an efficient finite state machine. And there's probably lots and lots of class libraries, and I'll leave that as an exercise to you guys. But basically, the idea is think about the states, think about how, how you get from one state to another, and put it all in one place. Okay. All right. So now each team before we break. How about, um, let me just see if there's anything else I want to do. Yeah, okay. How do I think about the state changes? The, the objects, so what you want to do is enumerate the objects that you have. Remember that, at le that many objects will have at least a coordinate, a coordinate indicating where they are in the game space and indicate what the properties are of the objects other than where they are and then think about what the changes are and how those might be constrained. Okay? Five minutes.